In this tutorial, I am going to go over data templating. Now, most of the time when you're working with data like the array I have here, what you're getting back with that data is just plain text. And what you're going to want to do with that plain text is actually spit it out on your page with some markup uh, so it could actually be presented and rendered uh, in a web browser. In order to do that, you have to do well, just that data templating. Now let's look at the code that I have so far. I have a very plain HTML document that has a first in this has jQuery attached and then I've declared this array that has uh, some URLs and then down at the bottom I have uh, an each statement that iterates through these arrays and spits out the value. And if we look at the result uh, it's really nothing special. It's all that data as a single string in one line. Well, what I'd like to do is have each one of that, each one of those links actually pre be presented on a new line and make it actually a clickable link. So um, let's actually start first with the first part. I want to put it on a new line. So if I want to add some markup to it, I could add it right here in my document write statement. And since everything is a is, is going to be interpreted as some kind of text. That means that I could add my HTML right in here. So if I'm going to start first is with some single quotes. Now I'm doing single quotes. You could use double quotes, but uh, since I've already started with the single quotes, I'm going to stick to it. And it's going to be useful uh, when you're at do use an HTML because HTML uses a lot of double quotes when you're using elements in there like if you wanted to define a, a class for an element you, you double quote it and that kind of thing so uh, I'm going to use single quotes and let me add the P element which is the paragraph element and this is going to spit out for every value that comes out it's going to open it's going to open it as a paragraph and then I'm going to use the plus sign to add the actual text that I have in from my array and then I'm going to need to add the closing p tag at the end of it. So I'm going to add plus and then another two single quotes and in there I'm going to close the p tag. Now the result should be that each one of these values shows up on a new line and in fact it did. Now I'm halfway there. The next thing I want to do is actually add actually the anchor uh, element to it. So we could start first by just adding right in there that good old anchor tag that says it's going to be a link. Now uh, this helps us somewhat because we uh, it becomes an anchor but it doesn't have a link yet to it because it actually needs that href. So how do we actually format a link? Now right down below I gave myself an example to work with and if I wanted to you know, link to Wikipedia, this is the exact format I would use. It'd be a href equals http colon forward slash forward slash, then the string value I have in there, then I need to close it, then I have to actually put the string value and then close my anchor. So this gets, you know, it's not very complicated as it looks, but when you start digging deep in the code, it's very easy to get confused. So what are we talking about here? We already have, if we consider the Wikipedia example, we already have these two elements. So it seems like these two elements, the www.wikipedia.org here and here, would be replaced with this variable that we have, my URL's value. Um, so we have to add that, and then these double quotes is what makes things tricky. I mean, not tricky, just easily confusing to the eye. But that's why we use single quotes from the beginning to accommodate HTML's uh, love for double quotes, because we use them all the time. So we've started our P, and then we have our A. And we have A href equals... And then we have the double quotes. And now after this, after these double quotes, let's, oh no, we could do HTTP colon forward slash forward slash. And now we're going to add this uh, string that we already have. So I'm going to remove that closing brace. And uh, I'm going to keep the double quotes because it's going to add that. Then I'll add another plus, And we're going to add my URL. So, so far, this piece of code over here brings us all the way up to here. So now we're going to have to add another um, 
another string value in single quotes of the double quote and the closing. So let's go plus and then single quotes. I'll add them both at the same time. And we said we needed the double quote and the closer. Okay, so now we have, let's see, what, oops, I think I, th I added that at the, see, see what I'm saying? It gets confusing quick. I added that at the wrong place. So I'm going to take that and move it over here. And let's see where we're at. So this piece of code brings us there. Then we need the... Uh, we don't need the www. That's okay. We could we could eliminate that. Uh, my URL is good. I'm going to add a plus. See, it's like the concept's not as hard as just eyeballing to making sure you got it right. And then we're going to make sure we have the double quotes and the closer right there. Then plus my URL plus that. You know what? I think we're good. Let's see if our templating went smoothly. Wow. It opens up CSS tricks. Let's make sure our Wikipedia is cool. And, oops, let's see, jQuery. Now this is, uh, seems like a simple concept, but it's very powerful. And it's something uh, you'll find yourself doing a lot when you're making all sorts of apps and widgets. Because essentially, while I just created a my own static array of URL values. If you're going to be pulling things from uh, dynamic sources like Twitter, Facebook, anything like that, you're just going to get back plain string values and then you're going to have to do a whole lot of data templating to be able to actually present it in your app.